Hey guys, Elizabeth Quinn here again with Elizabeth Scenes and Sense. Welcome back to my channel. I thought that today we'd take a little field trip because I just kind of redid my Florida room, flipped the furniture back around. I used to have it this way a long time ago and then I got really sick of uh, raising a puppy with the way that things were going on in the house. But I have since decided just this morning to drag all the furniture around, do a vacuuming, redo it, and have it in a way where I could actually film out here. So. I thought that it would be super, super fun to enjoy the fall colors. And yes, you're going to hear the heater. Yes, you're going to hear the uh, road noise from our expressway and you're going to see my ring light, but that's okay, right? So I have missed you all. I am done with my couple of crazy weekends and I am ready to get back in the saddle and enjoy filming and the consistent uh, output of Elizabeth Scenes and Scents. So welcome back to my channel and I am your lead consultant, Liz Quinn at waftingwonderfulwax.com sensi.us. You can find all the things that are not retired that I'm going to talk about today in my What I've Been Warming video on that website. And I am taking new customers at any time. And I am always just so excited to see people and be able to take care of them on my website. So let's get started with the brick that I have been loving. And I'm sure you know which one that is. Caramel chestnut Look at that. Look at the damage that I have done to this. A brick, guys. I think we used three, maybe four of these cubes for samples, but I have been warming this and warming this and warming this and warming this. Oh, it's just so good. It is this warm chestnut. It's got a lot of depth and richness and some sweet caramel. I have to say the top half of this brick was more caramely than the bottom and that's not normal. Normally there is complete distribution of oils and scent in a Scentsy brick, but there's a little more woodsiness and chestnutiness on the bottom half of this brick. I do actually like the sweetness that I got from the top half of it with the caramel slightly better. I ordered two more bricks in the two for 40 as soon as I could get them on Monday. And I am sincerely hoping that the distribution of oils in the next two is more consistent, but I love this anyway. So I've been mixing that and pairing it with different things. The other day I paired it with toasted acorn and oak, which is very similar, a little bit more woody than your caramel chestnut. So this one was one of our harvest trio last year and it's really, really nice. It's kind of mellow, it's got sort of an earthiness to it, and it absolutely, with matching chestnut notes, complements the caramel chestnut. Another day though, I got really brave and I mixed it with black forest pine. Now, I was mixing it part of the way through the uh, caramel chestnut melt, so to be totally fair, getting a really good balance between this, which is gonna be more assertive, and the caramel chestnut, I think I would need like half a cube of black forest pine and a lot of the caramel chestnut, but this is a pine and smoked vanilla and mandarin and all these just like really nice woody rich note kind of a bar scent. And I wanted to see if the two of them together would make something that was sort of woodsy and chestnutty and it was pretty good. I just need to get the ratios right. So then I was just melting caramel chestnut in my bedroom. I was just melting caramel chestnut in my Florida room back here. I was just melting caramel chestnut here or there. I would melt it anywhere, much like eating green eggs and ham. So after that, it's all bars and all just kind of regular stuff. So one of the days I was doing maple vanilla glaze and this one is just wonderful. I have been talking about it a lot. So it's got the maple, it's got the vanilla, it has sort of like a caramelized brown sugar smell. It's like a cinnamon roll with no cinnamon. It's got that gooey, gooey, bakery amazingness to it. And I love maple, so this one's been a hit. And that I have been pairing with butter pecan. And so they're very similar, both extremely sweet yeah, if you're not into like tooth achingly sweet bakery, you do not want to do these together or either of them at all. But the butter pecan is a little bit more rich and deep because it has the roasted pecans, but it has very similar sweet creamy notes to the maple vanilla glaze. Another day I broke out my one bar of gingerbread donut. Now on that day, I had some caramel chestnut going somewhere else. And although I really like this, I'm afraid that this bar, maybe just because it's a new pour or sometimes when a bar has gone away, I feel like when they reformulate it, it's not quite the same. The gingerbread donut, which has 
a donut note. It's got a little bit of a pastry note and a lot of gingerbread spices. It's got a little bit bitter. So that made me kind of sad, honestly. I will obviously enjoy warming the rest of this, but I don't think I can leave it into my warmers for many, many hours because it was either that or the chestnut, and I've been melting the chestnut so much, I don't think it's that bar. I think it's this. Got this sharp, kind of a biting quality that I did not care for. So I guess I'm glad I've only got one bar of that. And on the same day, I was doing tons of Stroop Waffle Delight, which is in my club. This one also came in the same bundle, but I get it in my club on a quarterly basis. And this one never goes bad. It is the most wonderful butter and this Stroop Waffle cookie and a little bit of cinnamon sugar and almost like a caramely gooeyness. It's very much like pumpkin pecan waffles. It's amazing. So... That was all different days. I do not remember which day because like I said, the last two weeks have been a blur, but I just kept throwing clams into the basket and making sure that I knew I could at least talk about them <laughs> when I got on. So then another day I did a whole bunch of my cranberry pumpkin spice. This bar is in my club. And honestly, even though all three of last year's Harvest Trail were phenomenal, I'm sad for the rest of you that this one didn't make it into the catalog. The other two did, which is awesome. But Cranberry Pumpkin Spice has cranberry, it's got pumpkin, it's got a little bit of spice, probably like a sweet cinnamon, and just this perfect October to November. To me, it's like the quintessential November scent. Kind of a happy, uh, mellow pumpkin smell. It is something that reminds me of old school Yankee tarts or a Yankee candle, and it's just perfect comfort. And cranberry and pumpkin, we don't get a lot of that mix, and so this one is always a winner for me. And I went through not two full bars, because I don't think that either of these was a full bar when I was melting it, but there were a lot of cubes. All right, another day. I was brave, guys. I melted winterberry apple tea and it was good it was good i'm so happy that it worked it didn't get that note that i've gotten in the past that made it smell sort of dirty or again kind of like the gingerbread donut a little bitter this was nice it is sharp but the apple and the cranberry and the tea and the honey it was good and then i did it in alternating warmers with blackberry spice which is like one of my absolute favorite bars Oh, it's one of the two new releases that I'm absolutely going to be clubbing, and this one probably has the priority to club. Oh, I may even like Frosted Vanilla a little bit better, but I can't see myself melting it all year round. Blackberry Spice is everything nice for a spice lover, and it balanced the winterberry apple tea very well. So this is sharper and a little more wintry. The blackberry spice has, of course, your cedar, your spices, and your blackberry, and a little bit of, like, blueberry, too. And it's just so warm and it's so comforting and so inviting. So these two together were a hit. All right, another day. When I got back from my weekend away this last weekend, I was at a camp. I was exhausted. I felt dirty and gross and yucky and I wanted freshness in the house. So, and I took a bath right away. Eucalyptus wreath is really, really growing on me. I threw this in a couple of warmers when I got home on a, an evening. Oh. You know, I don't talk about this one a lot because it is sort of like October through Christmas or January for me to melt it. And I think it's two years ago it was a new release. But I'm really enjoying it this season. So I know that it has like mint and it's got a soft eucalyptus note and maybe a little bit of juniper. It's so, so nice. So if you're kind of looking for something for November but you don't quite want to go for all the way into Christmas and you're kind of over your sweet pumpkin-y scents, try ordering this one. I think you'll really enjoy it. Mm. It's more like a seeded eucalyptus. It doesn't have that bite that like your traditional spiky, I forgot the name of that eucalyptus, but the, the really ridged one rather than the one that has the pretty uh, seeds and it weeps, which I love using. I will be getting as much of it as I can get on my get my hands on after Thanksgiving to do Christmas. And I have started planning Christmas, you guys. So we will probably talk about that after Halloween. There will absolutely be tree videos. There will absolutely be a home tour. And there may even be a couple of like special project type videos, kind of like I did the mantle for fall, where I gave you three mantle options. 
I will do a couple of decor DIY type videos for Christmas and probably I'll do a demonstration of the tree that I'm going to put in this room as a video. It will just depend on time, stress levels, all that fun stuff, you know, but I will get some stuff up for you. And please let me know what would you like to see most? Would you like to see wreath making? Would you like to see decorating a tree? It'll be a smaller one because my big tree takes hours. Uh, a tablescape, what would you like? So um, just put some comments down below and that'll give me about a month to kind of prepare and think about it. Anyway, back to eucalyptus wreath. I paired it with a couple cubes of Fearless by Nature. And this one, it was interesting how the two of them played together. This was a little bit more mellow and, and um, just like relaxing. And I don't even know what the notes are in this, but it was sharper, it was sweeter, it was more like birch bark and sap, and a little bit of wildflower meadow. I, I don't even know what's in here, but it was a really nice, fresh, not Christmas, but not fall, just really good, zingy, relaxing kind of a pairing, which is what I needed the evening that I came back from up north. Okay, so another day, I think this was the day I was packing to go away. I was so wanting spice. And I remember, it's funny how scent memory works. I was getting ready to do the same weekend retreat away last year when I got my first set of bricks as a consultant. So this was a scent memory for me. Sweet orange pomander as a brick. The very first time I melted it, I had told my girls because they didn't go with me. Well, one of them went with me last year. I said, you need to hold down the fort with your dad and I need you to melt. So they were doing the sweet orange pomander. And when I had left the house, it's like, what, three, four days away. When I came back, you could still smell some of this because it's so strong. For me, I had changed the warmers out most of them before I left this year. Oh, guys, this, this scent. If you love uh, Yankees, I think it's home sweet home or anything else that's old school Yankee with a lot of spice, I hope you put this in your club or you picked up a brick in clearance because this is so, so nostalgic and good. So it's got orange peel. It's sweet orange pomander. It doesn't smell like a juicy orange at all. It's got every kind of spice you can imagine and it has that late fall and into the holidays warmth that just gets me in the heart and it's so, so good. So it was a scent memory for preparing to go away on retreat and it was neat to do that again this year and it was just awesome. So I also put in a little bit of Autumn Sunset, which is similar. This one just doesn't like make me tear up. So this one's super strong. It's got pumpkin, it's got spices, it's got every like everything that's good for fall distilled into a spicy bar that's Autumn Sunset. It'll go for days. It's a great bang for your buck. So those were wonderful. Now, what do I have left? Today, I decided it was kind of rainy, kind of like a cuddly sort of a day, and it's mid-October. It's funny, I like save all these bars, and all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh my goodness, look at the calendar, it's mid-October, I've got a month to melt all this stuff, and then I get out Christmas, I gotta hurry up and use some things. So, fairy tale pumpkin, I used the whole bar, this is the one that I got in my club in September as a freebie, and it's all over the house. So it's got blueberry, I think it has black raspberry, it has licorice, it's got sort of like a bottom of the candy bucket smell with a little bit of pumpkin and lots of berries thrown in. And it's weird, but it's fun and it was perfect for today. So this was in most of the warmers, but I wanted to amp up that berry note because I know that there's blueberry and like I said, I'm pretty sure it's black raspberry. So I put that with some buckleberry, not as much. I just threw in a few cubes of buckleberry and that amped up the berry factor, made it less candy-ish. And buckleberry is just all the saturated berries with a little bit of spice and a tiny, tiny bit, bit of coffee cake at the end. So these two, it's been just a perfect cuddly rainy day kind of a combo and I have loved it. All right, what did I do in the basement? I have a couple different things here and I have just a couple things that got done in the bedrooms. I did actually melt caramel chestnut in my bedroom. It was so cozy and rich and warm, I loved it. Another day I did in my bedroom Pacific Sandalwood. I've only got these four cubes left and then I have a bar that uh, my friend Linda swapped with me a few months ago. And that's all I had, but I just was in the mood. 
So even though it's not in the notes, I sort of got like a warm, sweet, smoky orange zest note out of this. It's supposed to be more like sandalwood and a little bit of almost a marshmallowy note. And it's really comforting. And I used it in my bedroom for three or four days because I don't have very much of it. So I wanted to make sure that I got every ounce of scent out of it. And it's one of those bars that doesn't throw very strong, but it ticks along for a long, long time. If I have a regret of not keeping something in my club, this is definitely it. It's a beautiful bar. I hope someday we actually get it back and bring back my bar, but I've never seen those LTOs available to vote on. Anyway, so um, in my daughter's bedroom, she did a lot of honey pear cider, which is one of her favorites, and I'll, I'll do the basement last. I usually go the other way around. That's okay. This whole video has been a change up, and that's good. We need change, right? Oh, but honey pear cider is just this smooth, beautiful pear cider scent. It's lighter than cider mill by a little bit, and it's just gentle and calming and sweet. It is retired. I know that we've had opportunities with some of those retired bar bundles that come and go over the months to get some of that. I think, gosh, last time it was in a flash sale was months ago. That's where I got a whole stockpile of it, and it's just been wonderful. So, bed basement mandarin moon i had like one sad little cube left in here and i threw that in for a day downstairs it was great it's strong enough that it scented the whole basement space so this has a really nice sweet oranginess it's got spices especially ginger it's a good medium to medium strong throw but it doesn't bite like some of the other orange scents that have spice it's just perfection and it's definitely a fall scent all right, I also used up, see, this clamshell's done, yay! <laughs> I used up those last two cubes of pumpkin chai in the basement for a couple days. It was beautiful. So it's got the pumpkin, it has the chai spices, it has the milk note, it's perfect. If you're looking for like just the perfect, like Goldilocks, not too small, not too large, not too hot, not too cold pumpkin scent, I would recommend pumpkin chai, it's amazing. And last but not least, I did some ghostly greetings in a few places in the house, but especially the basement. And this is a bar, I was going to look up the notes before I got on, and of course I forgot. This is a bar that I know has some patchouli. It must have some really deep berries and some other like woodsy notes. It is a unique scent that I really only melt in October. I do have a small flash sale order coming that has a couple more bars of this so I can melt it a little bit more freely. And this is really, really nice. It's a great October and early November smell. And I also threw in Simply Vanilla in a warmer actually with some ghostly greetings. And oddly enough, the Simply Vanilla wiped out the ghostly greetings, which I found shocking because that's a pretty strong bar and it has a lot of deep notes. I love Simply Vanilla. It may just be vanilla, but it's like the perfect white shirt or the perfect pair of jeans. It's perfect. And it just scented the whole basement and it was relaxing and it was beautiful. So that is everything that I have been getting through. How are you guys liking your harvest and your holiday? And then on Monday, I could not believe how fast some of those Christmas favorites sold out. One of my absolutely best customers, I felt so bad for her because I didn't think that they would go as fast as they did. By three o'clock, it had been like two hours. Two of the ones that she was interested in were already sold out. And I personally wasn't looking for any of those, so I didn't have any sensey heartbreak. But I hope that they do those favorites again next year because it was wildly popular. Anyway, let me know what you're liking, what was the one that got away this season, and uh, what you're thinking of as we're kind of getting towards the end of October and sort of preparing for Christmas, at least as women, we always plan Christmas way ahead, right? Or at least some of us that are addicted do. Um, November for me is a huge blur of Christmas preparations and I will talk to you soon. This is Elizabeth Quinn with Elizabeth Scenes and Scents. Thanks for taking a field trip into my Florida room. I will talk to you soon, bye-bye.